Hello everybody and welcome to the 24 hour series powered by Hankook. After exciting races in Dubai and Mugello, the teams have all headed to Spa-Francorchamps in Belgium for the third race of the season. 139 drivers represent 26 nations for 42 teams with 45 cars and 13 different marks. A superb grid for the 12 hours of Spa. There are two divisions, GT and TCE, with 11 different classes. Something for every motorsport fan to get excited about. But the excitement is not just on the track. Dutch promoter Kreventik, on Thursday evening, brings a little motorsport enthusiasm to Malmody, near to the circuit. I was very happy that I heard we do this parade. Normally you can do not that, or can on the street with a race car. So the fans are very happy, are smiling and uh, crying somewhere. And uh, for me, this, that's like Creventic too, a family, familiar thing for the fans that they can go so close to us, to our drivers, to the teams. It's perfect. I think this is so fun. And this really sets Creventic apart from many other series is uh, these little extras, like even the, the parade, the town, and seeing so many of the locals out here, it's really awesome. And uh, makes, it, makes it a different event and really stands out in your memory as, as something you want to go back and do again. Undoubtedly, though, the biggest attraction is the circuit itself. Spa-Francorchamps, one of the classic Grand Prix circuits with corners that are household names. Eau Rouge, Blanchemont among them. It's in the hilly and forested Ardennes region of Belgium. It was first opened in 1921. It's been through a few changes down through the years and started at almost 15 kilometres around. Now, seven kilometres or just over four miles, but still, of course, the longest circuit on the Formula One calendar. It's 100 metres from its lowest point to its highest, and that, with its numerous fast curves, has earned it the nickname of the Ardennes roller coaster. Many people said that's this number one track, so I'm very excited for tomorrow to race and um, the legendary Eau Rouge. So I'm very happy to drive here and let's see what, what the track brings. This track is like no other and it's probably one of my favorites, if it's not my favorite in the world now. Um, and Eau Rouge is, wakes you up every time you come around. I think it's going to be a really fun event. You know, I've raced, raced a lot of tracks all over the world and this has to be probably one of my top. I mean. Uh, the guts it takes to do a rouge, do the fast left-hander, do every corner here, it's just unbelievable. Yeah, it's the best track in the world. Now with the gravel, it's really a good, good challenge for the drivers, so it's really cool. The El Rouge is so, so nice, so amazing, yeah, the, the track is amazing. Yeah, I enjoy a lot, yeah. So let's take a look at this brilliant circuit, just over seven kilometers or four miles around. The corners are numbered, of course, and there are 20, but this is classic stuff, so it's all about the names. Down the Formula One start, finish straight to the first right-handed hairpin at La Source. All the way down through the gearbox, it's one of the slowest points on the circuit. Easy to get too excited with the right-hand pedal and spin into the wall on the right-hand side. From then, it's downhill to Eau Rouge in one of the most breathtaking sets of corners in any motorsport venue in the world. Over the top at Radion, and then you're climbing the long straight, the Kemmel straight towards Le Com. Again, a complex of corners that it's easy to get out of rhythm with. Right, left, and then right at Malmedy. This is one of the highest points of the circuit, and then you plunge down to turn 10, which is a hairpin, Bruxelles. Late apex there, and then get the power on. All downhill at this point, and you've got to get the car set up nicely for Jackie X corner, turn 11, used to be called Speaker's Corner. Still going downhill, the Double Gauche, the double left, or Puon. Super quick entry into the first part of it, then balance the car for the second. Don't let the car get too far over to the right-hand side because you're setting up for the next pair of corners. Fania, the chicane. And then again, still going downhill through turn 15 at Campus and into the old Stavolo curve Paul Frere and then slightly uphill again up to Blanchimont now are you going to be brave and go flat through here with these downforce GT3 cars it's flat in fifth gear if you are brave and then the final two corners all the way back down the gearbox into first for the bus stop and that's the circuit of Spa Francorchamps
qualifying is split into three parts of 15 minutes each. Up to three drivers per team will be in the cars, pushing them to the limit to put down the fastest lap around the circuit. The best lap of each driver counts, and then the team with the fastest average from the three sessions takes pole position for their division or class. And both GT and TCE are on track at the same time. Lots of traffic, it's not going to be easy to get a clean lap. Third place in TCE goes to the Audi RS3 LMS of AC Motorsport number 188. And in the TCE division is the number 25 team Veluga Porsche 718. They are also a pole position for TCX. And at the front of TCE, a familiar picture. The fastest qualifying car is the number 159 Cupra. It's the all tie driver lineup at BBR. They have bossed the series so far with wins in Dubai and Mugello, and their quickest lap times in all three qualifying sessions have given them an average over a second faster than anyone else. Yeah, the first we had to say thank you to the team. The car was perfect. And also, also we are lucky, like, we have clear lap, so we are, the traffic so bad, but, but we have had the clear lap, so. That's why we can do like the perfect lap. At the front of the GT division, the American team of CP Racing is in the mix again. In Dubai and Mugello, they've announced their ambitions for the overall title. In qualifying at Spa, they're in third, a great starting position for the race. Second place goes to a very special car, the Bentley Continental GT3 of Bordeaux by Bascoot Racing with the number six. Hopefully they'll have a little better look in the race than in Mugello. They had some technical issues there. Dominating the GT division, the number 22, Team WTM racing with their Ferrari 488 GT3. The secret was to get a clear lap, honestly speaking. So it was not my very best lap, it was a good lap, yes. But the secret was, was, was to hit the point where you got, where you know, okay, now it should be clear. Yeah, because you know, uh, it changed a little bit, the art of qualifying this year. That means you have to qualify with all cars and this makes it a little bit more difficult because uh, the gap between the slowest and the fastest car is quite big now, so it's not so easy to get a clear lap. Exactly as BBR did in the TCE division, they've put down the fastest lap times in each of the three qualifying sessions. Pro driver Daniel Kelvich has showed his outstanding skills with a 2.18.878. He scores the fastest overall qualifying time over two seconds quicker than any other driver. So pole position then to Wokenspiegel team from Germany. In the Porsche GT3R, it's Team EBM in their number 61 who head the GT3 class. In the 992 AM category, Paul Sitter is the 903 of Red Ant Racing. They've had fantastic performance in every race of this year's Hankook 24-hour series. The number 710 Leipzig Motorsport Lamborghini Huracan Super Trofeo are in pole in GTX. And in the 991 class, it's the Porsche 911 GT3 Cup of Fombello Motorsport by Baz Kooten Racing that puts down the fastest lap around Spa. The only McLaren on the grid takes the GT4 class pole for the Swedish Alfab Racing Team. Saturday is the first of two race days here at Spa. Beautiful weather and on the grid, a tense atmosphere full of excitement. The mechanics and the drivers making sure every last detail has been checked. 12 hours, a long time for Man and Machine. Both need to be at their absolute optimum. Yeah, for us, it's not a problem because we're in the first position and we try to defend this position, of course. The Bentley Continental GT3 of Team Bordar by Baz Kooten is attracting a lot of attention on the grid. This nickname is The Beast. Enjoy every lap. Big smile, really. It sets our car to drive and easy to handle. Uh, we need to watch for fuel consumption. We need to watch tyres. So let's see if long lasting will bring us the victory. There are only a few of them, 20 ever built. Uh, a lot of them are in, uh, in Asia and America. There's a new challenge for all the drivers here at Spa for 2022. Gravel beds, much closer to the track than previously. 
the uh, runoff areas that, that used to be, if you made a small mistake, you could drop a wheel over into the asphalt and continue on. Now we have gravel traps there. And so you have to leave that little bit of extra margin. That slows us down a little bit, and uh, it makes it a little more exciting with cars getting stuck. So we're hoping that uh, we don't have too many code 60s with cars off in the, in the gravel, particularly our car. <laughs> Just a few minutes left before the start of the race. Tension is rising. We'll soon find out when the countless tests and night shifts have paid off for the teams. We try to do like everything we come to, to test first before like on Thursday, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday we come to test and Friday. So we do a lot of effort to test the car. So in the car now is in like perfect condition for us. So uh, wish us luck. <laughs> So will Fortune favour the Thai team and can they take a third straight victory? Let's take a look at the starting grid. Paul Sitter, WTM Racing and Bordar by Baz Kooten Racing alongside them on the front row. In the second row, CP and Herbert Motorsport. In fifth and sixth in the third row, EBM and Car Collection. Behind them on the fourth row, Yuta Racing and Dubai winners, Phoenix Racing. So the warm-up lap is completed. We're getting ready to start. Green flag is in hand and is now in the air. We're racing at the Spa 12 hours for 2022. Krumbach in the Ferrari down the inside. He's defending from Bob Herbert in that big, big dark coloured Bentley. Bob Herbert, lovely, late on the brakes there. I think he's held his position. No one having any problems at the source. On as I say that, there is a spinner. That's the West End Racing Team, the 404, and that's in the gravel. First casualty, first victim to the new gravel traps on the outside of La Source. The leaders over the top of Radion, down the Camel Straight, still the Ferrari holding first position. CP have come through in a second. Herbert defending in the dark rain red. Bentley for third position, Car Collection Motorsport, the white and blue car coming down the inside. Further back, the Porsche 992s and 991s are having their own battle. So after the first few corners, WTM Racing leads ahead of CP, the Bentley in third, Car Collection Motorsport fourth, EBM with the Porsche in fifth, sixth, Yutta Racing. Alfab Racing's McLaren, very, very tight, nowhere for them to go. All of the classes and divisions have already been mixed up on the circuit. This means that there's some quicker cars stuck behind slower ones. We've almost got that West End Porsche out of the source gravel. Great work by the marshals and thanks to them. Might be able to get this car going before the field comes around. The good news is the West End Porsche is moving. Lost a lot of ground, but we're still clearing up the gravel. So it's a code 60 virtual safety car, if you will. That slows everybody down so the marshals can clear the exit of La Source. Already showing that these new gravel traps are going to be a real problem just off the racing line. If you make a mistake there, it's going to be very costly indeed. Marshals doing a cracking job. We'll be back to green flag in no time. WTM. 22, Wockenspiegel, it's the Ferrari, it's leading. It looks absolutely brilliantly set up. EMG in second place, that's the 85 CP racing car. We're back to green, and there's a decent gap there. Meantime, Vortex in the pits. This is the 702. Oh, they had no look at Mugello, and it looks like this race is starting the way the Mugello race ended. With the top three getting away, there's a cracking scrap for fourth down to eighth. Bob Herbert not able to defend there at the source. He's dropping back a little bit. Jeff Kingsley is in the black and white Porsche. He's in behind Yutta. That's the number 71 Audi. Bob Herbert in the Bentley defending a little bit into Lacom. This is a cracking battle. Across the start-finish line. Yutta defending down the inside and round the outside. Jeff Kingsley goes up a spot for Team EBM. Earl Bamba Motorsport in the Porsche. It's not been a great start for the Paul Sitters in TCE. Candidate Kasiri messed up the start. He's lost a couple of three positions. He's now having to fight back. Audi in the gravel. 
That's the Utica. That's going to cost him some time. Be very lucky to get... He has got out of it. Very lucky to get away with that without any damage. Battling Porsches further back down the field. This is the 992 AM class. Red Ant Racing, the number 903. And the 929 is HRT Performance. Super drive in the opening laps by Charles Esplanade in the CP Racing AMG Mercedes. They've been such strong supporters of Creventic. Second place at the moment. Drama and a big crash. That is... Oh, that's all rouge. Oh, my goodness, that was a big crash. That's the Lamborghini from the Lithuanian RD Signs team. This will be a code 60. Paulius uh, Pascovicius is in the driver's seat. Code 60. And the pits stay open, of course. Good option for the teams to come in for fuel and possibly new tyres. The right fuel and strategy is always crucial in the 12 hour racing. During Accord 60, you can only take 50% of your normal fuel allowance. And the fueling area is down in the downhill endurance pits, and there are only eight pumps. WTM have been in and out. They're still leading, got a decent lead as well 21 seconds. Back to Car Collection Motorsport now in second. Uh, they have profited from the Code 60. Third, it's CP Racing, the number 85. Now, is this bad luck or a strategic blunder for Phoenix Racing? They didn't do their service during the Code 60. Came in when it was green and they've dropped down to 25th position. Pierre Kaffer is pushing really hard at the moment. This is the big fight back. Let's have a look at some of the other class leaders. The TCE division, led by Team Veluga. Number 400 is the GT4 class leader, the fabulous blue and yellow McLaren of Alfab Racing. Team BBR's Cooper are getting back towards the sharp end of their class. Not a great start, but Mung Kong Sathian Thirakul is pushing that Leon competition right to its limit. Third place for them so far. Well, it's not going to be three victories in a row for BBR. That's a big crash down at the bus stop. Big damage. We have a brake problem. When yeah. step step on the brake, there was nothing. So, so it's just what you look like now. I try to like, run into the gravel to minimize our damage. So it's helped a lot. Yeah. Oh, that's another very big crash down at campus. That's the Vortex that has gone in hard there. None of the wheels pointing in the right direction. Marshall's already on site. This will be another code 60. Well, we know how plucky this team really is. They never say die. Won the Spirit of the Race award at Mugello, but that's a lot of work if we're going to see that bright orange car later today or tomorrow. They're going to have to align pretty much everything on that car to make sure it's safe to go back out. So after 38 laps, the pole sitting WTM Racing Ferrari is now down to third position. It's been a bit of an up and down first couple of hours for them. Uh, uneventful but very clean run into second place at the moment for CP Racing in the 85 AMG GT3. So now leading for the first time after the pit stop sequences, it's Car Collection Motorsport in the number 34, the blue and white Audi. Coming down towards the La Source hairpin. That's our leader. Oh, there's a touch. There's a touch. That's the GT, another one of the GT3 Audis, one of the Evo 2 cars, the Santa Lock racing car. There's a little bit of damage on the left front of our leader. They've pitted it. The PCR number 117 Leon is off at the side of the road. Another code 60, another chance for some pit stops. WTM in the pit lane. Brilliant stint from Leo Weiss. Yeah, it was really good. At the end, I was struggling a bit with the tyre. And uh, yeah, but I got some free laps with not much traffic. And uh, yeah, it was a good stint. So Leo Weiss out of the car. New set of Hankook tyres at its own pit. And then it's filled up with race fuel down in the endurance pit. And they're back on the track. Well, that's extraordinarily 
good work from Team BBR, the 159 yellow and red Leon competition. The Cooper is back on track. Uh, this is just points gathering now. I don't think they're going to have much to say at the front of their class. So plenty going on in this endurance race in the first third of the challenge. Third, fourth and fifth at the front of the field. The board are by Baz Kooten. Bentley has made up a couple of positions they lost earlier on. It's Mark van der Aar who is behind the wheel at the moment. That's audacious. Down the inside of the EBM Porsche, he's right in behind the blue and white car collection Audi as they go across the top at Radion. Oh, the Bentley is quick down the Camel straight. It is there, I promise you, tucked right in behind the Audi comes to the inside. Something flew off there. Was there a little touch between those two cars? But Mark's gone through at Le Combe. Alea Kolach in the Mercedes AMG GT4. Uh, gaining a lot of experience for one quite so young. Only 17, the female driver, and she's done a lot of racing already. Well, I did truck racing uh, last year and the season before that. So uh, I've been doing it for once, well, two years. I became a French uh, junior champion last year. So uh, it was so far a, a good uh, start. Uh, yes, this is my first time racing in Spa and uh, this long endurance. So uh, it's a completely new uh, experience for me. But uh, I just finished my first stint and I had a lot of fun. I enjoyed it a lot. I think maybe we're fourth in uh, GT4, but uh, still a long way to go and uh, pretty good so far. Replacing Alia in the Bagheera ZM Racing AMG is her twin sister, Yasmin. Now we've got full course purple, code 60. Huge incident at Malmody. That is the Bagheera ZM. AMG, and that's the third place car in the TCE category. AC Motorsport, the 188, the Audi. They've come together. Huge damage to both of the cars. However, the good news is we are hearing from race control that both of the drivers are OK. The Bagheera AMG looking very, very badly damaged down in the pit lane. That's a huge amount of work. I don't think we'll see that again this weekend. Code 60 for the clear up and recovery of those two vehicles. Nearly 14 minutes, CP racing into the pit lane. They tried to give it to me on the restart pretty hard and I knew that I needed to get that gap. And also being really super careful in traffic around here. You have to be, you know, real careful. It's 12 hours, got a long ways to go. Uh, even though this is my first time here, I've really had to respect them since I got here. So being super careful in those areas, I have to make sure I give my car back to my teammates in better condition than I got. It. Great strategy from CP Racing Team. Sees another shuffle of the top three. They now lead ahead of Car Collection Motorsport, the Audi, the blue and white car, in second position for the number 34 team. And in third, it's the Wockenspiegel Ferrari. Let's take a look at some of the other classes as well. TCE, the Knocker Racing Team in their Golf GTI TCR, look to be cruising, and they've been leading for quite a while now. Standings after four hours in GT. CP Racing Team and the AMG are leading from car collection in second. The pole sitters in the Ferrari WTM in third. Phoenix Racing after dropping back to 25th earlier on, now in fourth. Then it's the Red Camel Jordan Porsche in fifth, having a great run. Santalock in sixth, ahead of Jutter in seventh. Herbeth Motorsport rounding up the top eight. In TCE, uh, it's, well, as we've been watching, Knocker in the lead ahead of Holmgard Motorsport and Wolf Power. So a third of the race has been completed. We've had drama and some fabulous racing action. Don't write the headlines yet. We've still got eight hours or so to complete this second European event in the Creventic 24-hour series 2022. You know, endurance races have their own pace. It's not just about top speed. Coming out on top 
needs a full team effort, not just a quick car. Tyre management, fuel consumption, being smart with code 60s, basically how much fuel you can get in, good driver changes and flawless pit stops in the end. It's all about a joint effort, and the team which utilises all of those factors perfectly will probably have the best package and possibly win the race. CP Racing have been the team doing their best with what they've got. They are leading and, very importantly, they are one lap ahead of the third-place car. Well, they were, because Daniel Kalvitz is now right with them on the Kemmel straight. Now, gets back onto the lead lap just as they go into Lacombe. Now, that will be absolutely crucial for the restart tomorrow. Car collection soaking up some penalty down in the pit box before they come for some new Hankook tyres. 30 seconds, that penalty for causing a collision, and that, together with this pit stop, will cost them second position. Things going much better at the moment for Team Phoenix. They are gaining on the cars ahead of them, lap by lap. Alia Earhart, sensational in the car at the moment, and he's back in the top three. Sadly, this is an all-too-familiar sight down at Vortex. One of the two cars still in the pits. The mechanics trying to piece it back together. They had a lot of work to do at Mugello, and they're back at it here. So the first day of racing here at Spa coming to a close. Let's have a look at the leaders in the different classes. The 991 category dominated by Team Van Berlo by Bas Kooten Racing. Ten laps between them and the second place team. Surely they're banking on the victory. In the AM class for 992, it's the Belgian Redont family. That's the 903 Porsche that leads there. The German 9 und Elf racing team in the red and green Porsche 911 GT3 Cup MR stayed away from any big trouble and is leading the GTX class. The leader in the GT4 class is Team ACP Tangerine Associates in the number 421. All three drivers staying calm and putting in consistent and fast times in on the circuit. The Lithuanian Noka Racing Team, brilliant performance for them. They're leading the TCR class as well as the TCE division for touring cars. It's a good job from them today. We had a minute uh, gap to somebody behind us, so I think we handed it over. But yeah, but it's a strategic pit stop to prepare before the race tomorrow. We need a full uh, full tank of fuel and new tyres to prepare it for the race tomorrow. Finishing the day at the top of the TCX class will be Team Voluga in the number 205 Porsche, and they are three laps ahead of their nearest competition. Alia Erhardt continuing to be sensational in the Phoenix Audi, basically driving qualifying lap after qualifying lap, and now, after a not great start to the race, they're back in the top three. We have been uh, a bit unlucky right in the beginning of the race, so we dropped back one and a half laps and uh, our target now was to, to stay in the lead lap and uh, that was uh, what we tried to, to calculate and uh, in the end it looks like it worked out. Now we have uh, 10 minutes left in the race and uh, for tomorrow everything is possible. Everything is possible, surely the perfect motto for endurance racing. Second place, Joachim Krumbach and his teammates in the Ferrari, the WTM racing car. Leaders, CP Racing, Shane Lewis getting back in for the last 45 minutes and he'll finish this first five and a half hours of what has been top quality endurance racing. Checkered flag for the end of Saturday's portion of the race. We have an overnight leader, but nothing else has been decided. I think uh, we'll start tomorrow, maybe not in as quite as good a position fuel and tire wise as two of the other cars, but still sitting pretty good. And of course, we're thrilled to death. I think we're going to be about at a 20 minute disadvantage, maybe on tires, maybe on fuel, you know, from some of the other cars. I didn't follow them exactly, but I think there's a couple of cars that managed to get a later stop than we did. But I don't think it's going to be significant in the in the big picture. Six and a half hours to go on Sunday. Here's how they stand in the overnight hold. CP Racing back in the lead ahead of WTM Racing. Phoenix Racing in third. Car Collection in fourth. Herbert in fifth. Judd Racing in sixth. Fabulous seventh position. The family Breukers, Team Red Camel, Jordans.nl and Van Berlo Motorsport by Baz Curtin in eighth position. 
Now, if you're on the same lap, everything gets closed up. So the first three teams starting from effectively from zero tomorrow, nothing between them. In the TCE division, no major changes, not a racing team still in the lead. Homeguard in second, Team Veluga is at one position now in third. Racing over for today, silence settles in over the Ardennes, drivers, cars and maybe the mechanics having a deserved rest, recharging for tomorrow's final day. Sunday, the second part of the race about to get underway. Sun is back out, cars are on the grid, let's hope they all fire up, ready to go full throttle and fight for every inch, every place to the chequered flag later on. Tension is rising among the drivers' teams and families. You know, having a win here at Spa-Francorchamps is something unforgettable. Uh, by the way, nobody allowed to work on the cars overnight. If you do, uh, you'll get 10 lap penalty and that, you can't refuel either. Uh, let's catch up with some of the leading teams. Not very surprised. I mean, you know, we watched how it played out yesterday. We, we grinded through, our guys did a great pit stop. They gave us a great car. The drivers did a good job. I didn't drive much yesterday, if I could say that. Um, but yeah, you know, we kind of did our thing. Our strategy, the strategy kind of fell in our place. And also, you know, we got lucky on some code 60s and stuff. Mm, I think we have a good speed and uh, all the drivers, uh, the lineup is very good. So we have to fight and have uh, maybe a little bit more luck. Um, but uh, we will see how it's going. Yeah, it's always uh, very disappointing to be not in the lead lap uh, for the next start. It was very close, I think around about 10 seconds, but uh, it is what it is. But uh, yeah, today is a long day again, and uh, hopefully we can uh, get the lead lap again. A fantastic seventh position overall for the Breukers family in their Porsche, but they did play a risky game with the fuel. <laughs> we were greedy because uh, we calculated to get out in front of somebody else, so to gain two laps, uh, but we didn't realize that we did not have enough fuel to reach it to the end. So uh, it's just a simple, stupid mistake. So let's see what the day of racing brings for the Breakers family and the other teams. Oh, now there's a problem for the Red Camel Porsche. Now, is that too little fuel or have they got another problem? Car being pulled back into the pits. They can't work on the car until the race has started. They're going to lose at least a lap here. The other teams warming their Hankook tyres, focused on the restart. They'll neither know nor care about the Red Camel's issues. Wait for the red lights to go out. And we are racing again. Another six and a half hours here. Crumbach in the Ferrari, down the driver's left, round the outside into La Source. That's fantastic. That's really setting out the stall early on. Charles Esplan, I'm just dropping back a second for a moment in the AMG. Michael Doppelmeyer in the Phoenix Audi, just dropping back a little bit there. He's in third place at the moment. Oh, he's dropping back much further. In fact, he was very slow over the top of Radion. Battles for all of the class positions already have been rejoined. There's the Red Camel 909 going again out of the pits. They've solved their ailment, and the first thing Ivo Breukers will have to do is go to fueling. Well, the good news for all the teams and for us, for the entertainment value, is there's been no major incidents this time as we restarted the race. Remember that early spin yesterday. Let's go on board with Tim Muller in the car collection motorsport Audi. He's pushing hard to keep up with the two leaders and try to get a lap back. Tyre's not quite up to temperature, so he hasn't got full grip. That means he really has to concentrate around the fast corners here at Spa. Car looks a bit twitchy, doesn't it? Crumb back in the Wochenspiegel sponsored Ferrari. Built up a decent lead already, hasn't he? He's really pushed hard at this restart. Here's a battle in GT4. Colin White in the Ginetta trying to unlap himself from the ACP Tangerine Associates BMW and they've both gone in the gravel. That BMW is leading the class at the moment. Colin a few laps down after problems yesterday. Colin does get the lap back there. Yasmin Preissig in the gravel in the Audi. 
Uh, this is decent timing for those who haven't made their first pit stop this Sunday. Car collection straight into the pit lane. CP Motorsport coming in as well. Phoenix, though, staying out on track. Oh, now, this didn't work for them yesterday. But we're back to green, and that has paid off for them today. The Code 60 much shorter than anticipated. They're making up ground while everybody else is in the pits. And as they go through past our commentary box, they take the lead. Phoenix are leading the Hancock 12 hours of Spa. What a comeback from yesterday. Seven hours into the race, CP Racing now back in the lead. Let's find out what Charles Esplanade thinks about the race so far. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think everybody's a little excited on the first day, and I guess maybe the mirrors got a lot dirty last night, and then nobody had a chance to clean mirrors this morning. We had a little more more uh, problems with traffic than, than normal. You know, usually it's a pretty clean race, and everybody kind of does what they're supposed to do, but it seems like there's a lot of guys not looking in their mirrors, so... We'll keep going. We, we survived all the carnage so far, and uh, we'll keep doing what Putman, you know, CP Racing does and dig on. Well, Jochen Krumbach is definitely trying to foil the plans of CP Racing. He's on a mission at the moment. Gaining, gaining, gaining. That's the leader. That's CP Racing right ahead of him. They're going to have to go three wide here. Krumbach goes to the extreme right and takes the lead. Brilliant stuff. Code 60, not for the TCR. On the other side of the road, it's the Red Amp Porsche that needs some trackside assistance. Oh, he's paid his breakdown insurance. CP and WTM into the pits. Krumbach handing over the Ferrari to Daniel Kylvitz. So also with the Code 60 now, the, the, the luck, what we need yesterday, we didn't have, but uh, today it is a little bit better. But anyway, at the beginning, we were also not so happy with the Code 60. Uh, but we could, uh, yeah, we could um, go fast lap time, so we could overtake the second and the one and the first, and yeah, we are back in the race. And uh, I hope that we can try pushing, keep pushing, and uh, yeah, let's see. Phoenix are playing a different strategy game again. They've stayed out. Pierre Kaffer charging hard, and he's increased his lead now to a minute and 16 seconds. He'll have to come into the pit soon, though, and that will mean the WTM Ferrari number 22 will cycle back to the top of the leaderboard. This race is still completely open. In TCE, Knocker Racing Team, they have just been bossing this. They've been in the lead for plenty of time, hours now, and surely they're going on to victory. Eight hours completed, here's how it stands. WTM back in the lead with the 22, ahead of the 85 AMG of CP, the 18 Phoenix Audi. One of those three teams, I think, will probably be on the top step. That's because Car Collection Motorsport in fourth have had two punctures and dropped back a little bit. Herbert in fifth, Judder in sixth, HRT in seventh, and Santalox Audi is in eighth overall. No changes again in TCE, knock a racing team. I might as well have just recorded that and played it back. Still a comfortable lead ahead of Holmgaard and Team Veluga. That's the leader with smoke coming out the right side. Looks like a tyre issue, maybe some debris or gone over a kerb there. And the WTM Ferrari is going to lose the lead. It will be CP that goes back to the top of the standings. Oh my goodness me. Into the pits for the Vockmann Spiegel car. Yeah, right rear tyre just about holding on. Uh, a full new set of handcuffs. They'll get fuel as well. Kalvitz now, well, he'll be two laps down when he comes out. However, the others ahead of him still have the pit. This is not over. CP racing into their pit for a scheduled stop. Shane Lewis out of the car and able to talk to our pit reporters. No, I wasn't fighting it, but I will be honest with you that I was footing it. I mean, um, that car is really fast. I'm, I'm not taking anything away from the drivers. The drivers are excellent in the car, but I got to say that, um, we'll just say that that particular car seems a little bit too fast. Down to La Source for Bob Herber in the Bentley, oh, that was a bit ambitious. He's hit the Santa Lock Audi. 
It's the second time that car's been turned around at that part of the track. We're hearing from the team that that is steering damage to the left front of that Bentley. Another Code 60. Into the pits. During the Code 60, serving a penalty. That's the Notna Racing Team leading TCE. You've got to take your penalty within two hours of it being assessed. Good idea for them to come in during the Code 60. Second in the TCE division, still the 102 Volkswagen Golf GTI TCR of the Danish Holmgaard Motorsport team. Problems from Team Veluga in the last couple of hours has elevated the Spanish rally keep by Totcar Sport in their Cupra to third position in TCR. Smoke down in the pit lane. I don't think that's a fire, but the Alpha McLaren is in right at the end of pit lane. Let's find out what's happening. Yeah, it's going too fast, I think. That may be a problem. No, I, I don't know exactly. Too sad, we had good speed, looked nice and had fun. We will be back and we will be extremely fast and nice looking again. At the front of the field, still three teams fighting for this victory. WTM and Phoenix Racing, they're in the pits together, down at fuel. CP Racing goes back to the lead. Ebb and flow here at Spa, brilliant. All eyes now on Phoenix Racing. Pierre Kaffer is ringing every bit of performance out of the Audi. Eight seconds a lap faster last time around than Charles Putman in the CP Racing AMG. Oh, it's always good when you're up front. Yeah, even if you know, you know, in these endurance races, things can change with the strategy. But yeah, it felt really good to be up there. You know, I think the Ferrari's got an awful lot of pace for us. Uh, Maybe, uh, maybe with the Audi we have a race. I'm not confident that we can overcome the Ferrari without some help from the racing gods, but uh, you know, you get that sometimes, so we'll see. Here's a huge story down in the Knocker racing pit. The Volkswagen Golf GTI TCR has gone in hard at the bottom of the hill, big front damage. Sten Doran Pirimaggi, devastated. He's the man who crashed the car and he's thrown away an assured victory in TCE. Holmgaard Motorsport now in the lead. Of course, uh, I feel sorry for, for Noka. Uh, if, the, if the race quits like this, uh, they give us a, a good fight. And uh, uh, it's always uh, best to, to, to finish it out on the track. But um, as you say, a win is a win. And uh, we have uh, been waiting for, for a podium and a win for a long time now. So uh, fingers crossed, there's uh, some time left and uh, we'll just have to keep the car running and keep it out on track and we'll see. Moving into the final phase of the race. What a few cars have had issues. Meters and meters of gaffer tape. Hundreds of cable ties have been used to keep some of the cars in one piece, to get them back out onto track and to continue to battle. Just a few more laps now and the walking wounded will see the chequered flag. field a very special car indeed the BMW E46 M3 of WEC Motorsports they haven't completed as many laps as anybody else in the race so far and they've had their problems but this is a really special BMW 20 years old it has a great racing history and it's fabulous to see it on the track again with some more of the high-tech machines for the team it's not about the fastest laps, it's about getting out there and competing. And for David Cox and WEC, they've won the Spirit of the Race Award. Yeah, the one thing I've learned out racing for the last 20 years is you can never ever give up. Because if you do give up, you, we don't know what might happen. We only need one more car to have an issue today and we could have been in with a chance of a podium. The battle at the front of the field for the overall, still in full swing, late code 60 here. All top three teams coming into the pits, using that opportunity. Nothing decided yet, Elliot Erhardt in the Audi, that's the leading Phoenix car. Second, CP, the 85 AMG, 
and Georg Weiss is in the Ferrari now, the 488 GT3 of WTM. Erhardt doing a cracking job, fast times, and doing that without taking any risks, to be honest. 27 seconds the lead now over Esplanade in second place, who is slowing down. He's 20 seconds off the pace. What's going on here? What's going on is uh, there's a heavy stress level here right now. If you see by the lap times on the board, what we're doing, we've never stretched fuel this long. We're in the most conservative map. Charles is like lifting and coasting. I bet he's not even used the brake pedal. Five minutes to go. I don't know. Georg Weiss in the Ferrari closing down on CP Racing. Just five minutes to go. Most of the classes aren't decided yet. In GT3, Jutta Racing and their Audi. Great job for the team from Lithuania. Four laps ahead of Team EBM, the number 61, finishing in second place in GT3. Herbeth Motorsport, they'll not be satisfied with second place in the GT3 AM class and fourth overall. They always aim for a top three. Same for Car Collection Motorsport, third place in the GT3 AM class, sixth overall. Not sure that'll be enough for the ambitious German team. GTX class has been dominated by the number 719, the German 9 und Elf racing team, unrivaled and wins by three laps. Second place, French Vortex V8 team. They had to repair that car, but they go to second in GTX. Third in the class, Leipzig Motorsport, the 710 Lamborghini Huracan. Jubilation for Team Red Ant Racing, another great victory in the 992 Amp class. Two laps behind, HRT Performance takes second position. Maybe a little more up for grabs today for that experienced team. Third place, the team that literally loves speed, Speed Lovers from Belgium. In GT4, Team ACP Tangerine Associates with the BMW number 421 will win. Catesby Jones bringing that one home. And in TCX for special touring and silhouette cars, it's Veluga Racing with their number 205. On to the final lap for Phoenix Racing and Ilya Earhart. They didn't do their best work in the first hour of the race yesterday. Remember, they dropped down to 25th from then. They really showed us what they were capable of. Maybe bad strategy, maybe a bit of bad luck, but since then, flawless pit stops, quick driver changes, super fast lap times, no risks, no accidents, you can't ask for more. A deserved victory for the black and yellow Audi team. The gentlemen of the CP Racing Team surely just as happy. Uh, probably not the fastest drivers, but with calm and experience, they've even survived the nerve-wracking last lap with literally no more fuel in the tank. Here's the chequered flag, a fabulous victory for Phoenix. Second win of the season after they took the checker in the desert at Dubai. The hard work's paid off, well done to the whole team. Yeah, I mean, uh, yesterday we were quite unlucky in the beginning of the race, but today, in the end, um, it was quite a nice battle between uh, the Mercedes and the Ferrari, and it's nice to see how the championship is growing here in Creventic. Yeah, that was a big sigh of relief. It's, uh, I, I would say, it's like being an expectant father. You're facing outside that room when you can't do anything but hope that it's all the numbers are right and everything's there. But these guys did a fantastic job, both of them, and our engineer was awesome, our strategist, all those guys. Uh, we had to save a little fuel there at the end, you know, with the, everybody trying to play out their strategy and stuff. So. They were giving me the fuel number to hit, and I was trying to hit it. I got pretty close. We made it all the way back to pit lane on the cooldown lap. And here comes the winner of the TCE division and the TCR class, Holmgard Motorsport in the Volkswagen Golf GTI TCR. Great race from the Danish team. It will be second place for GSR Motorsport, the number 105. They crossed the line in third, but the original second place car, the Spanish team, really keep by Tot Car Sport. Got a post-race penalty, one full lap, not passing the ride height test for the TCR class. So 105 moving up into second, the 123 really creeped by Top Car Sport moving down to third in class. We had a perfect race, uh, first time in a long time. Um, everything's uh, made our way, so that's fine. Yeah, we, uh, we're losing together and uh, winning together. And now yeah. we uh, celebrate today.
Here's the overall podium on the top step. Phoenix, CP Racing from the US in second, WTM in third. Trophies handed over and then the obligatory champagne shower. Congratulations to the winners in the TCE division. Great job and smiling faces all around. Confirming then the final results of the Hancock 12 Hours of Spa, it's Phoenix Racing who win from CP and WTM, fourth Herbert Motorsport, Jutta fifth, sixth car collection, Santa Lock in seventh, Red Ant Racing, a fine eighth spot. So that's it for the Hancock 12 Hours of Spa, Frank Ashon once again. A spectacular event organised by Dutch promoter Creventic. Amazing endurance racing, fabulous pace, an incredible performance from the drivers and the mechanics. For the manufacturers, once again, German dominance in endurance racing continues here with just one Ferrari between Audi, Mercedes, Porsche and BMW in the top 15 overall. An incredible third stop of the International Endurance Series. The next race taking place at that German amphitheatre of speed the world-famous Hockenheim Ring. I'm John Hindorf. See you there.